welcome to No Walls. As you can see, everybody's not abiding by the that these are being obedient. Welcome to No Walls. This is my first people, never video. The camp. So this is going to be a new experience. Um, again. Hi guys, welcome back to No Walls. I'm so excited to have each of you worshiping with us this Sunday. And happy Sunday goes out to all of my sailors and to those of you serving in the military along with your families. We really do appreciate everything that you do in times of war and in times of peace. And happy Sunday goes out to all of the youth the young adults, and to those of you of wisdom, congratulations goes out to my sister and to my brother-in-law. They both earned their doctorate degrees, and so I'm really proud of them for uh, the endurance, <laughs> the long nights, the endurance. Um, I'm sure they got on each other's nerves, um, but congratulations to them for continuing the work in the ministry and, and growing in their knowledge of Christ. Um, and of the Bible, the Word of God. I'm excited about today's message. Um, it is one that I think uh, we all probably have heard before, um, and hopefully, prayerfully, it will serve as a reminder to us. Um, and for those of us who are hearing it for the first time, prayerfully, it will be a seed um, that will provoke you seeking out the face of God for direction and discernment. Um, so today's message comes from a very familiar passage. It comes from the book of Mark, the eighth chapter, and I will be reading verses 36 through 38. Mark 8, 36 through 38. Um, and it says, What good is it for someone to gain the whole world, yet forfeit or lose his soul? Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. Again, that is Mark, the 8th chapter, verses 36 through 38. And today's message is making a prophet. Making a prophet. Um, so, this is not... <laughs> <laughs> this message is not about a P-R-O-P-H-E-T, a prophet. Um, it is about making a P-R-O-F-I-T. Um, and we're going to really hone on on the verse that says, What does it profit you to gain this whole world and lose your soul or forfeit your soul? In other words, the question is, what is it to your advantage um, if you basically climb all the way to the top of a ladder and realize <laughs> it's leaning against the wrong building. <laughs> um, I love this passage of scripture. Um, I, I tell you immediately, let me just, uh, a prophet, a P-R-O-F-I-T, which is what we're talking about today. Um, a prophet is when um, it's not the same thing um, as just your income. It's not the same thing as revenue. Um, a prophet is I have spent, I have gained more than I spend out. So um, if I, you know, spend $50 on something and I sell it for $100, then yes, I have gained. I've made a profit. I've made $50. Um, to those of you who know this, I know you know this, but I have some young viewers, so I just want to make sure that I explain it. I put everything into context. Um, so that's a profit. If I go buy something for $100 and I sell it for $100, I don't profit anything. I just, I break even. Um, if I go spend $50 on something and then I go and I sell it for $25, then I have lost money. I didn't make a profit. Um, so a profit is when there is an actual gain, when there is an advantage. Um, and so in this passage of scripture, Jesus asks the question, what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and he loses his soul? Mark 8 uh, opens up and we see uh, in the beginning of Mark 8 a compassionate Savior. Uh, 4,000 people have come and they've gathered to hear him minister uh, and to teach. 
and Jesus says, well, we need some food. Um, and, you know, they said, well, you know, what do you have? And they said, we have seven, thousand, seven loaves of bread and a few fish. And so, um, yes, it's a different city, different story. <laughs> and he does the same thing. He begins to break it and bless it. And there's more than enough and there's leftovers. Um, and they come into uh, the city um, he heals a blind man and um, we come to the point where he begins to talk about the cross and about salvation and being saved. And he's trying to get over to them the point and the value of it. Now, I'm going to pause right here uh, in Mark um, because there is a passage of scripture where a uh, we identify him as a rich young ruler in another passage of scripture. Uh, Jesus is talking and the rich young ruler asked the question, um, basically, you know, how can I be saved? And um, he begins to boast that, oh, I know the commandments and I actually do them. <laughs> I've not murdered. I've not coveted my neighbor's stuff. Like I have followed uh, your commandments. And Jesus looks at him. And he says, okay, sell all of your possessions and follow me. And the Bible says that the rich young ruler was very sorrowful um, because that's what he couldn't do. He could not sell everything, give it to the poor to follow Jesus. And Jesus says, hey, <laughs> you know, in humor, uh, you know, it's easier for the camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to make it into heaven. A lot of people take that to mean you can't own anything. Like, don't buy a big house, buy a small house, don't have a car, don't have money. Like, don't. <laughs> that is not what that passage of scripture uh, is, is trying to identify. Um, but there are some idols in our lives. There are some things that are great possessions of ours. For some people, it's a person. It is um, a boyfriend, a spouse, a job. It's something that we ha are chasing after, that we have, that we possess, that we worship, that we idolize, that is so important that when we have to make a decision, Christ or that thing, we choose that thing. We choose work over Bible study or church. We choose the person that we love over studying the word of God. We choose everything else. And, and Jesus looked at this young, rich ruler, and he understood that his thing was the love of money, that he loved money more and his possessions more than a relationship with God. He depended on his money. He, he depended on his possessions more than he was willing to take a chance on God. And so in that instance, he says, listen, it's good. <laughs> you know how hard it is to follow God? Like you have to give up that thing that you love so much or that thing that you're chasing after or desiring of so much to follow me. And so in the book of Mark, it is a great question. The first question is, what do you gain? What are you going to profit when you subtract what you brought in from what you paid out? And I don't mean just in money. What would you gain in the end if, that word if is just so beautiful right there because in essence it's saying you're not going to gain this whole world. Like, <laughs> you can't own Coca-Cola, Google, Amazon, everybody's house, every property, every television station. Like, you can't. You know, there's there's lots of people that are so ambitious that they chase after everything. Um, if you notice, there's some people that you're like, oh my God, they have a beautiful house, a beautiful car. And guess what? They're still trying to get more. They still want to own more. They still want to be the top, but you'll never get there. So it says, what would you profit if, if just by chance, if by chance 
you really were to gain everything. You were the owner of everything. And Jesus came back. And you lost your soul. You pass away tomorrow. And you don't make it into heaven. It says, what is the real profit? If you think about all of the rich, filthy rich people who have passed away, who had so much stuff and money, if they did not have a relationship with Jesus Christ, we know they couldn't take their stuff with them because somebody else is trying to get it now. <laughs> what did they profit? What was to their advantage? What did they gain? They gained nothing. And so you can't even say, okay, let me hurry up. <laughs> let me hurry up and earn everything while I'm here on this earth. Let me forsake kingdom right now. Get, hurry up and do everything. And then go to Jesus. And he's saying, listen, Jesus, this is what you sound like. I can give you Jesus if you let me come into heaven. <laughs> it says, what can you give in exchange for your soul? That's the, that's the question. And here's the picture. Here's what the question is asking. Hey, Jesus, I know I haven't put you first. And I know I haven't served you. And I know I haven't lived my life so that you get glory. I know I've been loving money and things and power and women and you know, men and design all these things. But, but listen, but listen, Jesus, listen, listen. If you let me get into heaven, if you will let me get into heaven, I'll give you <laughs> my house, my car, all of my bank accounts. Like, 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 what could you give Jesus Christ? What could you give God, the creator of everything, in exchange for your soul. What? And sometimes there are things that we don't even realize. That we have given it so much of our attention. So much of our life to it. So much of our thoughts to it. That in the end, God's going to say, I, I don't know you. Like, I, I, I love you. But I don't have a relationship with you. And there is nothing you're going to be able to offer the Savior in exchange for your soul. Making a profit. Do you know what I want to profit? I want to hear him say, well done, my good and my faithful servant. How do I hear that? By saying, I accept you, Jesus, as my Savior. I'm going to let you lord my life. I'm going to allow you to order my steps. I'm going to make sure that every time you make a way that I declare that it was because of you that I advanced. I'm going to make sure that I thank you while I'm in all situations. I may not like them. They may not feel good. They may not hurt. They may hurt. But one thing I know, I cannot earn the blood. I just have to be grateful for the blood. So many of us are trying to make a profit. We're leaning our ladder against the wrong building, but we're not realizing that we have done that because we're not even focused on where we're supposed to be going. We're just so focused on getting to the top that we don't understand that once we get to the top, we're going to find out that that ladder we're on is, <laughs> is leaning on the wrong building. We're leaning on the wrong thing. One scripture says, look, Lean not into your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he will. In other words, he'll tell you, hey, excuse me, that ain't the right building. <laughs> when you're seeking after God, you listen, just seek me first and you'll get to rest. Some people are like, I'm just so tired. Why? You work in seven days a week. You don't have to. It's a choice that you're making. If you're working a job that requires you to work straight through church, straight through Bible study, you don't have no time for Jesus Christ. That's not something that God called you to. He's not going to call you to something that's going to pull you away from him. He's not going to call you to a girl or a female or a wife or a spouse or to a relationship that's pulling you away from him. That's not God. 
And that's why he says, listen, what is it profiting you to gain that thing? What is, how is that to your advantage? So many of us are worn out on, on this past Wednesday at the women's Bible study. At the women's Bible study, we're talking about excessive planning and how we get so anxious and, and then we start to panic. And, you know, a lot of our panic is because we've made plans and we left no room for God to add to our day. We made, we made no, we didn't leave any space for God to alter those plans. We said, my plan is plan A and God, I'll let you be plan B. And God's like, uh, it really <laughs> doesn't work that way. What is it? What have you gained? Another scripture tells us, listen, fret not when it looks like the wicked. It doesn't mean wicked people like people that are mean to you. That's not what it means. It means people that have not chosen to serve God. People who are living in this world for this world. That's what it's talking about. It could be, they could be the nicest people in the world. They don't have to be mean people. He's just saying, but they're wicked. Why? Because they have not accepted Jesus Christ. They're in opposition to God. And it's just, listen, fret not when it looks like those people are succeeding in their ways. Some of us are trying to, to, to gain things because we see what everybody else has. He's like, listen. Don't fret. Don't get anxious. Don't be upset. Don't be desirous of that. Because he says they're not really succeeding. Whenever you put things, this world, money, people above God, I promise you, you are not succeeding. Your bank account may grow. You may be employee of the month four times. You might get a raise. Like, <laughs> you might get to party and do all this other stuff. But the word of God is saying, listen, you're not really prospering. They're not really successful. But guess what? They don't know it yet. They don't, 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 don't get upset when, when people are working against you and it seems like they're succeeding. You think it, they're not. Pharaoh had a whole army. He had chariots. He had big old horses. He had things with wheels on them. When the children of Egypt, uh, when the children of Israel had escaped Egypt and they're standing there at the Red Sea, it looked like Pharaoh was going to win because here they are trapped. There's nowhere else to go and they're standing there. And it looks like the wicked schemes are succeeding. But God had already decided to make a way out of no way. He's like, listen, don't fret. Don't panic. Just trust in me. Look at Daniel. They were so mad about Daniel and that Daniel had found favor uh, in, in the king and the governor. They, they were so upset that Daniel was favored, that he was one of the favored, that they were like, listen, why don't you sign this decree? <laughs> what they knew is, this guy is going to pray to God and he keeps being successful. Why? Because he's seeking God and everything. I want y'all to hear that. Some of us don't have a prayer life. Some of us pray once a year, once a month, once a week. And he's saying, listen, this guy has a faithful prayer life and he is being successful in it. So listen, here's what we're going to do. We're going to trick the king. We're going to trick the governor. Hey, listen, why don't you sign into the creek? That you cannot call on anybody else. You cannot pray. You cannot bow down to anybody else except you for 30 days. Let's see what happens. And they were sure one of two things is going to happen. Either Daniel's going to continue praying to God and be thrown into the lion's den, you know, or he's going to stop praying to God and God is going to stop <laughs> having his hand over Daniel's life. So Daniel, like us, he had a choice to make. Y'all listen. Daniel had a choice to make. Do I stop serving God? Because I'm afraid of the enemy. Do I stop serving God so that I can gain? Or do I trust God? And I continue to trust him. He's brought me this far. He's not going to bring me this far and leave me. When he decides I'm going to trust God. And they go, oh, guess what? Didn't you sign this into law? Daniel is disobeying the law. And Daniel had to serve the punishment. He had to go into the lion's den. But an angel went in there and it's like, shh, lions, it's time for y'all ain't taking a nap all day. Y'all go to sleep. And and the king, the governor, so distressed, says, 
Daniel, I don't want to do this. May your God serve you. And that, and he fasted on Daniel's behalf. He up here calling on, <laughs> he's calling on Daniel's God. Listen, please save him. And the first thing he did, he went running, but like, open it, open it. Let's see if Daniel's still in there. And he was so glad that Daniel was still alive, that the wicked ones, the ones who thought they were succeeding, the ones who thought they had won, got thrown into the lion's den. I'm telling y'all story after story after story, everything that the enemy sets up to destroy you. Everything that the enemy does to you it is coming back onto them. Everything. Everything that people do to try to harm you, God keeps telling us, listen, leave that to me. Vengeance belongs to me. You just do everything as though you are working for me. All I need you to do is serve me. Don't worry about them. What is it going to profit them? To gain notoriety, to do harm to you, to be on top. What is it going to prosper them if they do all of these things? against a child of God and they end up losing their soul or what could they give in exchange for it nothing the answer is nothing you don't profit anything when you put man that includes women when you put money when you when you put ambition for worldly gain above your relationship with God you will profit nothing if you want to make a profit Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness. And all these things will be added. The joy of the Lord will be added. The peace of God will be added. Prosperity will be added. Prosperity just might be that you break even. That's still, pro <laughs> that's still prospering. It means that you don't want for anything. And then some of you say, yeah, yeah, yeah but <sighs> it's hard. It's hard to declare God where I am. He says, listen, if you're ashamed to live for me over seeking things of this world, if you're ashamed of me, then I will be ashamed of you. And the one thing I do not have time for <laughs> is for, <laughs> for Jesus <laughs> to be ashamed of me in the presence of his father. You got to remember that's whose blood saved us. That's who's the mediator. That's the one up in heaven going, no, God, that one is ours. Mm -mm, I died for that one. You want him to be like, oh, I need to, I need Jesus to speak up for me. Making a profit. If you want to make a real profit, then serve the Lord. Serve the Lord by doing good. Serve the Lord by doing good. To those who mean you no good. Serve the Lord by doing good and letting your light so shine before men. It doesn't say before good men. It says before all men. So that they can see your good works and glorify God, not you. Making a profit. Because the profit from this world, there is no gain. There is no eternal gain. And no, you cannot exchange your money, your cars, your houses, your notoriety. You cannot leave this earth with possessions. Not only can you not leave this earth and this world with possessions, but even if you could, what could you really offer the Lord in exchange for saving your soul? There is only one way that man can be saved, and that is by accepting Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. And if you want to do that today, today is a really good day to do that. I, I actually encourage you to do that. Maybe you have been working extra hard, trying to earn a whole bunch of money, a whole bunch of living, a whole bunch of status, and nah, 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 and you've been putting this, wor this world above the word of God, and you're doing all this stuff. Listen, he's coming back. And today you can decide, you know what, let me do my job and let me do it well. And anything connected to my job that pulls me away from the Lord, I don't want it. Trust God to fix it. Just turn to him. Say, God, listen, extend the deadline on this project. Give me another job that don't require me to work as many hours. Whatever it is that you're doing that's keeping you from Jesus Christ, I will tell you, it's not of God. It's not something.
that he would have given to you. He wants to spend time with you. He wants to love on you. He wants to say, well done, my good and faithful servant. All you have to do is admit that you are a sinner in need of a savior. And that savior is Jesus Christ. And you can do that today. You can go to No Walls Now What. Go down to the dot com and go down and you'll see best decision ever made. And then right there, there is a tool there. That will help you as you take this walk. You can always reach out to us at nowallsnowwhat at gmail.com. And we will be happy to pray with you, pray for your answer, any questions that you may have in this journey. It's not an easy walk, but it is a necessary walk. You will gain nothing from this world. You will, you will ultimately lose it all when this world comes to an end. The only profit that you can truly make is the accepting of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And I encourage you to do that today. If all hearts and minds are clear, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we come to you right now just thanking you so much for pouring into us the desire to serve you, to live for you, to pursue you, to pursue holiness, God. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that you left to comfort us, to lead us. And to remind us and to teach us of all things. God, don't let us pursue things of this world. Things that fade. Things that come and go. Things that are not lasting. God, let us build our life on a solid rock, which is you. God, help us to want the things that we have. Just help us to want the things that you've already blessed us with, God. God, I ask that you would heal us right now, God. Heal our minds from desiring those things. Help us to be satisfied with you, God, that you are going to provide all the things that we need, that you will give us a house and you will give us a car and you will give us good relationships, God, that will glorify you. Help us to trust you in that and to wait on you. I thank you in advance for all of these things and more. In your precious son, Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you all so much every week for watching and for supporting and for praying and for uh, truly seeking God and wanting to grow. The testimonies that come uh, each week are such a blessing and an encouragement, not just to me, but I do. I share them uh, at Tuesday night uh, men's Bible study and Wednesday night women's Bible study. I share them uh, in person. And so I do appreciate you all sending me the text messages and the emails to let me know how God is moving in your life. Please continue to do so. Um, again, I can't wait to see you next week. And uh, if you ever need me, just reach out. We'll be glad to uh, talk with you and to pray with you. All right. See you later. Bye-bye.